Welcome to No Worries Biology. My name is Anya Doyle and today I would like to introduce you to Joshua trees or as they are scientifically known, Yucca brevifolia. These trees grow only in the deserts of the southwestern US and nowhere else on earth, at least not natively. They grow most densely in the Mojave Desert to which the Joshua Tree National Park where I am today belongs. They received their common name, Joshua trees, from Mormon settlers who came by these trees when crossing the Mojave Desert, and it appeared to them that the unique shape of these plants resembled the biblical prophet Joshua raising his hands towards the sky while praying. Their scientific name, Yucca brevifolia, was chosen by the botanist George Engelmann when he first named these plants in 1871. As their scientific name, Yucca brevifolia, suggests, they belong to the genus Yucca. You might have heard of Yucca palms before, and those are close relatives of our Joshua trees here. In fact, Joshua trees are the largest of the Yuccas. Furthermore, they belong to the Agavacea family. Centuries ago, there were many more of these magnificent plants around, but as there is not much else wood growing around here, ranchers and miners used the trunks and branches of Joshua trees for fencing and to fuel their fires. With an annual growth of three to four centimeters per year, Joshua trees are not very well suited to offset such disruptions, and so their numbers dwindled. If left undisturbed, they can live for hundreds of years, in extreme cases even up to a thousand years. And being such slow growers as they are, it takes them quite a while to achieve their mature height of 5 to 15 meters. There are a number of parks where Joshua trees are protected nowadays. For example, the Joshua Tree National Park or the Mojave Desert National Preserve. But from the most significant danger threatening these trees, even those parks can't protect them. Scientists fear that Joshua trees might be one of the species whose distribution might be altered most severely by climate change. Ecologists suggest a high probability that up to 90% of Joshua trees might be lost by the end of the 21st century. So let's all do our part to reduce our ecological footprint as much as possible in order to protect these fascinating plants. What? You aren't sure why these plants are supposed to be fascinating? Well, let me show you. They survive here, in a desert. More precisely, a high desert at altitudes between 600 meters and 1,800 meters. Temperatures here range from minus 10 degrees Celsius in winter to 50 degrees Celsius in summer. From May to October, daytime temperatures of 35 degrees Celsius and above are to be expected. Late winter and early spring bring regular winds of 40 kilometers per hour and gusts of up to 120 kilometers per hour are common. The annual rainfall is just 13 centimeters with months that don't see any precipitation at all. So how do these Joshua trees cope? Well, let's start with the parts of the plant that we can't see. The roots of Yucca brevifolia reportedly reach up to 11 meters into the ground. This enables them to access deep and more reliable water resources in the soil. Furthermore, this extensive root system anchors them to the ground so that gusts of wind don't just push them over and uproot them. Now, let's have a look at the leaves. As you can see, these evergreen leaves are quite long and thin. On the one hand, this reduces the leaf surface, which is responsible for transpiration. So it limits the amount of water they lose due to evaporation. On the other hand, this allows the wind to slip through these clusters of leaves and therefore it reduces the force the wind can apply to the tree. Quite clever. By being arranged in such a tight spiral, the leaves can give each other shade 
and by doing so they greatly reduce the overall impact the sun has on the plant. As you can see here, most of the leaves aren't arranged horizontally, but at an angle or almost vertically. This also reduces the amount of sunlight hitting each leaf and therefore limits transpiration, thus it conserves water. Dead leaves don't just fall off, they stay attached to the branches and the trunk and therefore reduce the amount of sunlight that can hit these structures. So they protect the plant from sun damage. The tips of the leaves are quite sharp, so they can be painful if you're not careful. And the edges of the leaf are serrate. Those two traits make the leaves of Joshua trees very unattractive as food sources for most animals. So they are protection devices, so to say. Last but not least, the leaves of Joshua trees are covered by thick layers of wax. These have two functions. First of all, they immensely reduce transpiration. Without these layers of wax, Joshua trees would just dry up and die in summer, as they would lose way too much water through transpiration. And the second function, when it eventually does rain, and raindrops hit the leaves, they just roll off as they are repelled by the wax. By the shape and the angle of the leaves, they are guided towards the center of the plant where they eventually fall to the ground and can be taken up by the root system. So in a way, Joshua trees provide their own irrigation system. I call that fascinating. Beyond these ecological aspects that I've talked about in this video, there are also some interesting evolutionary quirks associated with Joshua trees. To learn more about them, go and watch the video Joshua Trees and Evolution. This is it for today. On www.noworriesbiology.com you can find a variety of materials on different biological topics. Just go and check them out. See you next time.